Oh, I, I thought it was absolutely incredible. I loved, I loved it. In fact, I think Professor Christopher Bartlett from Harvard University had it exactly right when he said the following. People don't come to work to be number one or to get a 20% return on assets. They come to get meaning from their lives. Meaning. I think he said what people needed to hear, and not a lot of speakers do that. It was um, motivating, inspiring, it felt very empowering. Raise your hands if you've been on Facebook in the last six months, the vast majority of you. Now let me ask you folks a question. When was the last time you saw someone on Facebook say, I am a total loser. I would love to post a series of posts for you to show you what a loser I am. Here's a picture of my daughter, isn't she ugly? Nobody does that. What do you get instead? Here's a picture of me. I just climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in the dark. Here's a picture of my six-year-old daughter going to Mensa class. This is what we get. We compare everybody else's highlight reel to our blooper reel. And it's having a real impact. Just the stories that he told, the statistics, everything was just, it was just a fascinating talk. Anytime you listen to a motivational speaker, a lot of times they just tell stories. For this, it was a lot of data woven in with story, and so for me it was definitely more um, interactive almost. You really nailed it uh, with uh, an emotional perspective, a logic and data-driven perspective, so it was great balance. Dear leaders, what do you think sustains motivation over the long haul? Invariably one of three answers will, will come up. People believe that sustained motivation comes from perks, pay, or promotions. Please allow me to summarily dismiss each one of these. Perks, here's the problem with perks. They soon become expectations. At that point in time, they have much more power to actually demotivate rather than to actually motivate. This is an actual screenshot from an actual company. I don't know what to tell you about our happy-go-lucky ping-ponger there. He seems to have a pretty easy time with his job. In fact, the only guy that I know who has an easier time with his job than this guy would be this guy here, uh, our friend Mr. Bolt, who runs faster than your internet connection. I can tell that he had lived what he was prescribing. Having been a manager of others before, I can really relate to Scott's message of making the why so prominent in what we do at work. The groundbreaking study showed the extent that we will go to subconsciously as human beings to hammer out the dents in our armor when they're issued to us. We don't even realize we're doing it. So your boss tears you down and says, you have no strategic thinking, and he says it in front of a group. Off you go to convince yourself that I'm actually okay, I'm gonna lick my wounds. I know I'm a good collaborator. I know I'm good at vision. I know I'm loyal. I know I'm a good person. We subconsciously spend all this energy pounding out the dents. And as a leader, would you rather have your people pounding those dents out or spending that energy in a much more productive pursuit? And here's the epiphany to this point. We have the opportunity as leaders to plant seeds of growth or seeds of doubt.